Hello and welcome to another show of true discipline. I'm telling you, it is discipline. If you don't have it, you lose the battle all the time. And uh, I am Grandmaster Angel De Jesus from Angels Karate. And I would like to welcome you again to another program. And the program of today is a very exciting one. The reason behind it is because the title is to have the right information. And the last past to show, we talk about mindset, number one. Number two, we talk about discipline, how those two work together. And in the area of self-defense or martial arts, you have to remember that this thing is no brand new. It started many. Well, if I use the Bible as an example, the first case of not using self-defense was when Cain killed Abel. He stunned him with and they just kill them. Well, after that, people start to learn how to defend themselves. I believe that. And people learn how to use knife. People had to learn to use uh, sticks. People use hatchet. People use rocks. People use a lot of things to defend themselves. Well, martial arts has evolved from empty hands all the way up to firearms. And how do you protect yourself? Based on that, I got the thought and idea to talk to a great friend of mine that he's the regional cell director for the USCCA and it's a nationwide organization and uh, he teach how to protect the family where it fit perfectly with our program of true discipline to add to the mindset and the discipline and to have the right information how can you work and without any delay I would like to introduce you to my friend Mr. Robert Pope, welcome to the show. Thanks, Angel. I appreciate you having me on. Very good, very good. And to start, can you share a little bit about who is Robert Pope? Which I just learned some information that I know, man. I know more about you than you know by yourself. No, just kidding. Yeah, probably a little bit. Stuff, uh, a <laughs> little, little history with some of my family, at least. Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, personally, as far as, you know, thinking about uh, self-defense and, and the discipline side of things, I started uh, taking a real serious interest in my personal defense and personal safety back in 2001. Uh, so I've been a, a big advocate of, of concealed carry and self-defense in, in general. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started teaching and started teaching the concealed carry classes and some more advanced uh, defensive techniques and got involved with the, the U.S. Concealed Carry Association, the USCCA, about uh, seven years ago as an instructor for them and then about five years ago as a training counselor teaching other people to be able to teach that. So w w I know that uh, talking with you a little bit that you also used to teach for the NRA kind of thing too? Yeah I originally started out <coughs> as an NRA instructor so I started teaching the uh, the NRA discipline uh, about 10 years ago and then about three or four years after that is when I uh, moved over to the USCCA just because I, I felt that the the curriculum was a lot better had a lot better content was a lot more relevant for people. More relevant so actually you're looking for the information right I mean the, the better information. <laughs> the, the right information and that's interesting that that's the title of today on it because it is not just the area of of concealed carry or know how to shoot and everything everything is together but it is the discipline that it takes and one of the things that I hear about the USCCA is that is the discipline that it takes even to 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 be part of it you know can, can you can you share more about your experience with the USCCA <clears throat> um, with the with the USCCA I really like uh, like their curriculum and what they teach and how they go about teaching it and the fact that uh, we truly believe that you know obviously in the state of Michigan it requires a specific class to be taken in order to get a license to be able to to carry a firearm but really your education shouldn't end there you need to be continuing with it on a regular basis that comes down to the discipline that's self-discipline because yeah the you know the state dictates this is the the minimum and a lot of people just stop there and that's all they do and they figure they're good to go where really you need to be pushing and going on further and stuff and that's one of the nice things about uh, but at least the USCCA is the fact that there's a ton of, of free information out there and available and videos and stuff that you can you can help continue your education and be and be better prepared for that and, act and even on that subject people do not realize that even if they those people that do conceal carry that even if they get into a situation that that thing doesn't end up just there 
at that moment that after that you're going to need uh, uh, to have the proper information how to act or react or behave at that time. If you had to defend yourself, for example, tell us about your fr friend or someone that uh, that uh, got into a, a, a shooting thing. I had a, a, a student of mine that took my concealed carry class that uh, ended up having to act in self-defense. He was attacked by two individuals that were half his age. Uh, they pinned him between the door and the steering wheel of his truck and, and started beating on him. And he, he was forced to, to draw a firearm and defend himself. Um, he did end up uh, killing one of them and paralyzing the other. Uh, the, the thing was there, and I felt as an instructor that I'd failed him because I got the phone call later that day, what do I do now? You know, what happens after an act of self-defense? And I realized that I, I had failed him in not teaching him what to do after the fact or how to, how to go about that and stuff. Because, you know, no matter if you do everything 100% right, you know, there's still going to be an investigation. You're still going to go through, you know, the process and, and dealing with law enforcement, prosecutor, and all of that type of stuff. Um, in this particular case, it took the prosecutor 37 days to come to a decision that it truly was self-defense and no charges would be filed. Well, there was 37 days there where his, he felt his life and his freedom and stuff was kind of hanging in the rafters and he didn't know what to do. So actually there's another battle if you just happen to use your, your firearm for self-defense that there's still a battle after that because you still got to deal with the court system, isn't it? You Absolutely. <clears throat> That's, 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 that's kind of amazing. And all this fit together because uh, one of the things that I have learned and seen a lot, it is that the USCCA has really put some time effort on understanding the behavior, the mindset, of how the brain functions in a self-defense situation. Can you share some, some of that on it? Um, they've got a um, big focus, the USCCA does, on, on the mindset and what happens um, during and immediately after that stressful incident and situation. You know, a lot of people want to want to just be able to tell everything what happened and stuff and give their story because, you know, they, they know what they did was right. Uh, the problem is, is the brain plays tricks on you. Um, you're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking straightly after the, uh, straight after the fact. And a lot of times the brain will actually kind of put nuances into what happened that maybe really weren't there. Um, in fact, there was a, a study done by doc, Dr. Alex Artworth about um, a self-defense incident or a critical incident and stuff where you were under the stress of the fear of losing your life. And actually, they surveyed uh, 157 police officers and found that, you know, 25% of them had memory loss from that mm -hmm. incident that were involved in a shooting. And 20% of them had false memories, remembered things that didn't happen. You know, and understanding that um, when you when you yourself are involved in a, a stressful incident where you're in fear for your life and stuff that, you know, it's not that law enforcement or something like that is trying to hang you up, but you might hang yourself up by saying something that, that truly didn't happen just because your mind thinks it did. And it takes time to process that information. You see, you see, this is another area. We have been hearing over the, uh, through the last 30 years that, uh, you need to train this one over here. And that is not just to say, I know. You cannot just say, I know. You have to have the right information with you, spend time meditating or practicing on it and, and chewing on it and pondering and rehearsing. In other words, you have to practice this thing over and over. How would you react when the time comes? For example, I give you a little, a little hint. About uh, three months, four months ago, I was driving from up north in uh, I-75, and I see a truck by uh, between 61 and 75 that was merging into 75, and it lo looked very heavy, very uh, loaded with big logs, you know, log trucks, you know. And when I'm getting close to it, I start to smell rubber burn, like rubber. You say, uh-oh. Then when I start to pass them, when I'm in the midsection of the truck, instantly, bah! I mean, the tire just exploded, you know, and I see debris coming through me, so I instantly reaction to get out of the situation, step on the gas, but at the same time, I'm swiveling with the truck because the truck swivel, so I swivel. It was like dancing, and at the same time, suddenly, I went to somewhere because I started to remember my training in the military, knife fighting training. 
where you think things exploding around you and you're running with your S16, you're trying to take cover. It was so vivid, vivid, vivid. So one event jumping to another one, but the reaction was the same. How are you going to protect yourself? How are you going to react at that time? Because one mistake of me, I would have drove right into the truck. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Panic on it, you know? So people don't realize that when a stress time comes, the human body respond, and it respond with adrenaline. And when they say adrenaline dump, how your system gonna react is based upon how do you train yourself to react. So they, to know the right information, it is at the same time, it is to spend time with it, absorb it, eat it, chew it, understand it, before you can say, I can defend myself. <laughs> you know? Absolutely, I, you know, one of the <clears throat> things I, I teach a lot of my students, uh, we talk about the OODA loop, or it's commonly referred to the OODA loop. Um, but OODA stands for observe, orient, decide, and then act. So one, you have to observe something happening, mm -hmm. you know, and then realize that that's a bad situation, whatever it may be, that tire exploding or somebody pulling a weapon on you or threatening you or something like that. You have to observe it. And then you have to orient your mind to the fact that that's happening. And it's a bad situation. A lot of times people get stuck on that where they, you know, they, they go along their days just thinking, oh, nothing bad's ever going to happen. And then when something bad happens, they just can't wrap their head around it. So that orienting your mind to the fact that, yes, this is a bad thing and I need to do something about it. Then I have to decide what to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I have to take that action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I go back. They call it the loop because I'm going to go back through. Now I'm going to observe whether my action worked or not or, or didn't work. And then I have to orient my head to the fact that it either did or didn't. And then I have to make another decision and then I have to act again. And I keep going round and round in that loop. And the thing is, is if it's a violent confrontation, somebody attacking you or something like that, that the bad guy is going through that same process. Mm -hmm. They've they pulled a weapon on you. Now they're going to observe your reaction and then they're going to have to orient their head to your reaction. They're going to have to decide what to do about that. And then they have to take that action. And what I always tell my students is the faster one, the fastest one to get through that loop, <laughs> the better, <laughs> the winner. Uh, so one of the things I do and I talk about, you know, situational awareness and paying attention and, and making decisions, you know, I can make my decisions pretty quick because I try to make them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I go around my day in public and stuff. Anytime I, I look for people that are maybe concealed carrying a firearm, I look for little mannerisms and things they do. Or anytime I see somebody that just kind of catches me off or something like that, I play out in my head, what happened? What would I do if they decided to commit violence right then mm -hmm. and there, whether mm -hmm. it's against somebody else or against myself, if they're going to do that, okay, now what am I going to do? And I play the scenario out in my head. You know, because that way I can start to think, okay, well, if this happened here in this grocery mm -hmm. store mm -hmm. with these people that are in this area, you know, or this crowded building or theater or wherever I happen to be and stuff, what would I do and how would I react? And I can sit and make those decisions. So that way in the future, if I'm ever caught in a situation that's similar to something I've played out in my head, I've already made decisions and I already <clears throat> know how I'm going to react. And that way, once I observe it, I can more quickly orient my head to what's going Going on, I make a much quicker decision and I can take much quicker action. So what you just described is that even to learn to defend yourself is not an easy process, isn't it? You have to invest and invest your time in how to protect yourself. You see, and, and, and attaching to that is that uh, no, no criticizing martial arts at all, God forbid, I don't do that. Every martial art is good as long as you learn how to defend himself, that's good. As long as you don't use it to hurt and avoid other people, it's an amazing thing. But some people are trained to rush right away, to rush something, you know, because in the training, in the ring, they got to rush their opponent. So that's in their heads all the time. Now, if they are ready to attack, the other guy, and he's, if he's not ready to attack, what's going to happen? It's like a bulldozer. You're going to take right over. You're going to take over the body. Both at the same time react. Boom, there's a collision. Now, who's going to survive? Always go, who had the best training? <laughs> he goes back, who had the best training? Yep. And luck running your sides too. But I like the analogy, who get first in and out of that loop to respond fast. Because what you demonstrated there was that you need to take the time to visualize. You need, to, you need your time to really uh, put the scenario in your mind and see yourself reacting to those steps as they happening. And it is true. I always, uh, so maybe I haven't shared that, maybe I have, maybe I have shared with you, but my son being 41 years old, when he was two months old, 
uh, an incident happened in Puerto Rico, and I got attacked with a machete, a machete, long blade machete on it. And uh, it was kind of funny because nobody wanted to take action, but the guy was going to close to hurt my family. I mean, you got a guy crazy with a machete, what you expect, you know? Somebody had to take action. And instantly, the training took over because I find out an equalizer, meaning I know the stick, you know, but he has a machete, I have the stick, and when I swing, he swing. But my stick got chopped into two. And then he went for the double zero right for the neck. And my little stick, as I went, I just saw the scene so far that I went here, the stick from here to here covered from me getting caught on it. But that was a reaction from the trainer with the nunchakos. You know the nunchakos, mm -hmm. you know? That was the same reaction also with the boat with uh, with, with uh, uh, Arnie Sticks. It's, it's a block to be able to do that. And again, the training took action. Why? Because I used to play with the nunchakos all the time. But if you don't put time into your training, how can you defend yourself? Yeah, no matter what tool you're using, you know, if you mm -hmm. haven't, you know, built the discipline to to turn it, you know, it's, it can't be, I always tell people, you know, I'm obviously, you know, I've done martial arts type training and a variety of dis different disciplines and stuff. I lean a little bit more towards the firearm side. That's what I train in. Mm -hmm. That's what I teach in, you know, but no matter what it is you're doing, you've got to go out and continue to work on it and stuff. You can't just take one class and mm -hmm. think that, okay, now I know how to do it. I'm going to exactly. be able to do it. It's exactly. not going to become instinctive. And in order for it to become instinctive, it has to be built into muscle memory. They say it takes up to 10 thousand repetitions of a particular action to turn it into muscle memory mm -hmm. and if you got bad muscle memory it takes even more to <laughs> fix it <laughs> so you know it's got kind of interesting because uh traditional martial arts right now it seems to be in a in a in a in a sense of decline kind of thing and the reason it is because it demands a lot of your time if for example in traditional taekwondo you need to learn the form, the katas, the punse they call, right? That is a certain move put together for the training. Well, what is the purpose of those moves? People don't realize that that's how you develop speed, accuracy, focus, <laughs> you know, strength on it. They say, oh, I gotta learn all that? Why I gotta repeat this? What I gotta, what does this mean, you know? And that alone, it takes away from the development. Mm -hmm. or that's con con uh, uh, continuous training or your brain development because it is a science now. Now they say that the neurons, the neurons get covered up with the myelin. The myelin are used like an insulator for the neurons so the neurons can fire fast on it. And back in 1986 when my instructor, Grandmaster BCU, introduced your rhythmic method, it goes back to the art of the Japanese sword fighting. Museum, no mind. They train themselves with a blade, but when it was time to fight, number one, no fear. Fear had to disappear. If you had to think at that time, fear sets in and you will collapse. That's the law of the sword. This is real, you know? Mm -hmm. So when the guy got attacked, multiple fighters, he ain't just gonna see who he gonna take. No, he gonna flow with whatever comes here his way. And he gonna continue without thinking. It's called Mushim. But it comes out of your training. But if you don't train, how can you go with no mind? Fear would set in. Because remember, man would react two ways. He gonna, three ways. I call it three ways. He going to fight, he going to flight, or he going to freeze. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's one of the three that's going to happen on it. And, uh, and, and I see that the training in, uh, on, on, on the brain through the USCCA is a pretty good thing that people should should be familiar with how they will react. What else can you add to that? Um, you know, that's the big thing is, you know, when you talk about how you react, you know, a lot of people, especially when it comes to firearms, probably more so than martial arts, you know, they go out to the range and they shoot at a piece of paper and, yep, I can hit it, I'm good to go. Well, you know, it needs to go beyond that. You know, I talked about uh, out in public and stuff playing scenarios out in my head. When I go to the range, I play scenarios out in my head. You know, when I'm shooting at, at targets on the range and stuff, I'm visualizing, mm -hmm. utilizing those skills in an actual situation and stuff. That way, you know, when something happens, I can apply that skill appropriately. Mm -hmm. You know, just going out to the range and putting holes in a piece of paper, you know, unfortunately, bad guys don't walk around with pieces, of, with targets taped to the front of their chest and stuff to say, this is what you need to do. You've got to 
you know, you've got to play the mind game and stuff in order to, you know, put yourself in a, in a situation while you're applying those skills. So that way, if something did happen down the road, mm -hmm. you know, this happens and stuff, I can appropriately apply the skill. You know, in, 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 in adding to that, another thing people don't realize that you got to train your family too. Mm -hmm. Because it's not you alone. If you are with your kids and your wife, I mean, how do you react? How are you going to move your family? How are you going to take your family from that danger? You, you, you see, it takes more than just, you even putting bullets in a, in a piece of paper. Absolutely. I mean, you can be the best at that, but that's how you train, just putting the bullet there. What happened to the rest of the world? It's like you have to have the ability to be totally alert. It's like uh, uh, one of the areas that I comment a lot is three word, three letters. I call it alert, ready, action. That's it. Just like in the camera. <laughs> ready, you know, alert, ready, action. Well, that's how you got to walk each and every day. You have to be ready mm -hmm. to take, you have to be alert to be ready to take action. You know, every single day that you get up. And uh, on the area of uh, a family, what else can you say about family on, in, in, and training and things? How to protect your family when you go out kind of thing? Uh, you know, one is by starting having those discussions with your family. So if, if you yourself have the mindset of, of being ready to defend yourself and defend your family, you know, they, they need to understand, you know, what to do if that happens, you know, so talk to your spouse, talk to your kids. You know, I mean, I, I talk to my, my daughter's now 12 and I challenge you to go into a building with her she's never been into. And when you walk back out and stuff, ask her where all the exits were and what were, you know, what was going on in the building, where were, you know, clusters of people and stuff and, you know, different types of things and stuff. Why? Because, you know, we used to play games with that. You know, that's the thing. You, you can do it without being, you know, scaring kids and stuff. You can talk about those types of things. You know, we used to play a game and stuff with my daughter. When we'd come out of a building, we'd get back into the car and I'd say, give me three ways out of that building. You know, the door that we came in and out is one. Give me two other exits that you could have gotten out of that building if something happened. You know, if the building caught fire or if, if, you know, somebody came in and started, you know, wreaking havoc on the building or something or on the people in the building and stuff, how are you going to get out of there? Because the front door may not be the only place to, to get out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once you've been put into that life or death stress situation, cognitive abilities go out the window. If you mm -hmm. haven't already thought about it ahead of time, you're going to freeze. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about the flight, fight, or, uh, flight, fight, or freeze, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not mentally prepared for the situation and you haven't thought about what you would do or how you would get out of a building and for, you know, and, and for instance and stuff, you're going to freeze because mm -hmm. your brain can't process that information that fast when it's in shock. Uh, from the situation. So if you've looked, go into a building and you look for your exits, I know my ways out and stuff. And then if something happens, I have, all I got to do is choose which one's the best. You know, even on that, uh, that remind me uh, also that uh, the whole even company started because looking for the right information. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit about the information, how Mr. Smith started the, the, the USCCA kind of thing? Yeah, our, our president founder, Tim Schmidt, uh, back in 2003, when he started having kids, realized that he was the defender of his family and he started looking at trying to figure out okay how would i how would i do that right now if i needed to defend my family right now how would i do that and he went out looking for information you know he went into you know some gun shops and started talking to some people and started looking for magazines and information and and really struggled finding you know good answers to the questions he had Amen. you know he was getting the runaround constantly so he set out on a mission to to provide that information to people you know so he started the magazine and got everything going and it's it has been you know a family oriented company where it's all about getting the right information out to people so that you can make the right decisions and take the right actions if you ever had to there act in go. self defense there you go you see so that's why even the title today, I mean, to have the right <laughs> information because it is go back to that. It's like a little bit on the Second Amendment. Do people understand what the Second Amendment is? I mean, what, what, what's your little experience on the Second Amendment? What can you share in one minute about the Second Amendment? Uh, you know, <clears throat> to me, you know, a lot of people, there's obviously misconceptions all the time, and, and people like to point fingers um, when it comes to the Second Amendment and say, well, you know, you don't need this for hunting or need that for this and stuff. To me, you know, I believe that we have a, a God-given right to defend ourselves and defend our lives. 
and to be able to live our our lives and stuff without having somebody else um, force themselves, you know, force their opinions onto us, or you know. Um, so to me, the the Second Amendment is a recognition of that, and in allowing us to have the appropriate tools as an individual and stuff that we may, may not be victims of somebody else's agenda, you know. And to keep our liberty and our freedom, they give you the right to be able to protect it. Because in the time when somebody decides to take charge and dictate how you should be, instead to be the other way around, we the people expect and demand. You do what we said. But when the one on the top decides to say, no, you're going to do what I say, it is time for you to rule with your second amendment. <laughs> it is time. That's part of the Constitution. That's part of the, of the uh, letter of independence. It's uh, crystal clear. Freedom, how can you protect freedom? It's a high level self of defense. You need to have the proper information. You need to understand what your rights are. You need to be ready to fight for your freedom. Absolutely. And if you do not have the right information, if you do not educate yourself, if you don't seek for yourself how to maintain your freedom and liberty and to protect your family, something is wrong with you. Because nobody going to... Well, let me rephrase that because I know we have a lot of servants like the police and the military, they're always giving their life off to protect us. You see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. But it's up to you as an individual to have that high-level self-defense desire to know information, to visualize it, to understand it, and to take into action. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the thing is, is you, I mean, you got to understand, I, I mean, I have the utmost respect for all law enforcement, military, you know, I, I'm good friends with a lot of them. You know, and even all of them pretty much will even say too is, well, when something happens, you've got seconds to react, the, the law enforcement's a phone call away. You know, they're not going to be there when the incident happens. They're going to be coming after the fact. You know, so you need to be prepared to, to defend yourself against somebody imposing their will on you right then and there. Because, you know, even if they're a block away, you still have to make the phone call, get the information to dispatch. Dispatch has to then call on the radio to the police, get the information to them, and then they have to be able to respond and get to you. You know, by the time that happens, it's it's already done and over with. They're yeah. just there to, to take the report and, and figure out what really happened, and it's all after the fact. You know, you have to be the one that can respond instantaneous there if you. something's happening because, you know, you've... You know, it's going to be over and done with within a minute or two. And, and see four that? or five minutes later, the police will show up and, and then be there to help clean up the mess. In other words, you have a few seconds to react. By the time you dial that phone number, it might be too late by the time they get to you. Time has changed. The time are changing. You have to take responsibility for the protection of you and your family. That's why we talk about true discipline. That's why today we even brought you this awesome friend over here, Mr. Robert Pope, to give us a little bit more information in what to seek, in what to search, in what we should meditate, visualize, spend time on. So I am Grandmaster Angel de Jesus from Angels Karate, and today title was to have the right information. Seek and you will find. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye now. Thanks.